Hey guys, how you doing? Hope you guys can see and hear me okay. Today we're going to be talking about fonts, fonts and in brilliance. And I hope you guys can see me because I'm a little out of breath because I've been running around filling waters. Um, got two big waters done today. And uh, I was trying to do some other stuff. I messed up big time. Um, I forgot to put the back vinyl on this in the hoop. I'm telling you, everybody says they love in the hoop designs. They're great when you follow the directions to the T. Sometimes I don't follow directions to the T. So I end up messing up. So this is unfortunately not going to be able to use them. So these are supposed to be like snap tags. Um, snap tags, snap, snap taps, I don't know. Anyway, you're supposed to just clip them, put them on your bag. So I thought these were cute because I'm going to do a couple of announcements. Okay. You guys have asked me to do Christmas in July. So I am going to do that. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm starting to work on the schedule on how that's going to work. Okay. Um. I'm going to have it done exactly like we do the giftmas, um, you know, the, El, the on the Esther, how we do for Christmas gift exchange. We're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it for Christmas in July. And um, I'm going to use the same software. And I hope you guys can see me. I feel like I'm in the dark, but you guys can hear me, right? So you get the 411. All right. So um, we're going to do Christmas in July. I'm going to open it up, I guess I'll probably be opening it up around May, okay? That way people can register and then we have like the month of June to create the gifts. In mid-July is when gifts are going to be due to be, or probably the beginning of July. For, for folks, I'm going to be asking people to please ship out their gifts. And then after that, then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the gifts in July. Now, this does not mean that I'm not going to have the annual gift exchange during the holiday season. I am. It's just that people have been reaching out to me and they really, truly want us to do this more often. They really kind of like it. Um, I kind of like it, too. It is a little bit stressful for me, though, because um, I'm always worried that someone that joins may not get a gift. Right. So what ends up happening is not only do um i get to get a gift to someone because i'm part of the gift exchange as well but i end up making a gift for everybody that participates in the event just in case someone um screws up and doesn't send their gift out and stuff at least everybody got something from me so you know um it's not i i know that you know a lot of folks have reached out says jeanette you don't have to do that I understand that, but it's just that I just really don't want anyone to ever feel bad about um, not getting something, right? So um, one of the things that I'm trying to do is I am trying to be a little bit proactive, and I'm trying to come up with little gift ideas that I could give out. I used to give out the mugs that got to be a little bit expensive because, you know, and a lot time consuming pressing all those mugs myself and all that kind of stuff. The last time I got my girlfriend to help me do it, um, and it was kind of fun, me and her doing them together and stuff like that, but it can get kind of expensive to ship all those mugs out, especially to a lot of people. And then at the same time, um, I know like three people got mugs when they received them. It was broken, and I didn't have any spares, you know, and I would have gladly sent them a replacement, but I didn't have any spares to send out. So... You know, so that's when the mug idea kind of like went whoop, out the window. So I was like, okay, I need to be able to gift you guys something that I know is not going to like get broken in the mail and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I did the notebooks for last Christmas. I gave you guys the notebooks with the little pens saying that you're awesome and stuff like that. So, and a lot of guys um, seem to like that, but I want to try to do something different. So um, I'm trying to be proactive. So that way, um, I'm not in a crunch in the month of, Ju of, Jan of June trying to get everybody's gift out. So 
I'm going to start working on my thank you gifts now for all the folks. So what are we going to be talking about? So, okay, right, so there's plenty of time. Now we're at 8.06. Let's talk about fonts, okay? Um, there are so many different types of fonts out there, right? You got your block, you got your script. Um, you have the fonts that are used for uh, the initials. You know, so, and a lot of times I get a lot of questions about fonts, right? So I want to, let's talk a little bit about the type of questions that I always get all the time, right? Um, sometimes you have your fonts that are thin and then you have fonts that are thick, right? And a lot of times people will embroider something like a bath towel um, or something with a lot of, of um, fuzz in it, you know, pretty furry, you know, fuzzy, fluffy. And what they end up doing is sometimes they have a particular font that they like, but the font is kind of like on the skinny side, right? And let me see if I can actually bring up in brilliance, because I actually want to show you guys um, some of the stuff that I'm talking about, okay? So I'm going to share my screen because I want to show you guys. And I'm going to be sharing my screen a lot during this happy hour because I want to be able to show you guys what I'm talking about regarding fonts, okay? And um, we know, because, you know, as I'm talking and I say, hey, you know, the skinny font, the fat font, I wanna be able to show you guys examples of what I'm talking about. Because sometimes you can know and sometimes you, you can't, you know? Um, and especially if you're new to embroidery, you know, you, in this skill, I really want you guys to truly understand. And I'm a visual learner, so I just wanna um, show you guys. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, let's see, I'm going to share the entire screen here. And as a matter of fact, while I'm doing that, I'm also going to pop it up here as well, because I want to make sure that I get to see what you guys are seeing. Because I remember one time I was doing a live with you guys and the screen was all jacked up and poor Miss Banks was calling me and I... <laughs> Hung up on her going i can't talk right now so um i want to make sure that i see exactly what you see so give me one minute while i set up everything and then we're going to be having our little talk and demonstration here and let's talk about um there we go and then we're going to be talking about the fonts all right so and excuse me i know i'm a little messy today but i've been working 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 all right so Let's see, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna share, and then now I'm going to minimize this. And hopefully you guys can see in brilliance. Let me see. Um, let me see if I see this, let me put this here. And it doesn't look like you guys see it. No, you guys do not see this. Um, okay, hold on one minute. All right, Chrome lost permissions. Really? Um, okay, that's great. All right. Give me one minute. I am going to try to figure this out. Oh, I wanted to use my MacBook, and it, my MacBook was was low on battery. All right, so let me let's try something else now here. Okay. I'm going to share the screen and window in brilliance share. And I'm getting the same thing. Man, okay. Um I'm thinking. I'm thinking, thinking, I'm thinking. How am I going to do this? <sighs> Why? Go to system settings, unlock the screen, check. Um, hold on. Check on Google. Oops, already settings. Hold on. Um. System. Oh, man. Okay, hold on. Just give me one minute, guys. I'm trying to figure this out. Man, this sucks. All right. Technical difficulties. And, you know, I haven't had technical difficulties in a while. 
Um, I don't know what error message I'm getting again. Shoot. Where is it? All right, hold on. Right here. And then it says, go to system settings. I did. And Chrome. Settings. System preferences. Click Google Chrome. Or is it in here I'm supposed to click it? Okay, hold on. Just give me one minute. I'm so sorry, guys. All right, this isn't going to work. All right. Um, where is it? Here. Oh, shoot. All right. Okay. All right. Technical difficulties. Let's chop it up. All right. We're going to have to talk. All right. I am going to get creative, guys. So don't laugh. I'm going to get creative because I am going to show you guys what I am talking about. All right. So I'm going to be going around and grabbing stuff so we could talk about fonts. Okay. All right. So what do I mean by thick fonts? Here we go. All right. This is a towel that I did for a girlfriend of mine. And let's talk about the fonts. All right. So and my, my lighting is bad. Oh, I'm really having a bad day today. Okay. All right. Positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts, right? Okay, so let's talk about the fonts now. When you are trying to embroider a, like, let's say a bath towel, right? Now, this is really a hand towel. And as you can see, it's not that um, thick. It's really, like, on the thin side, right? But um, bath towels you usually have them that's really, really thick. And, you know, a lot of times the fiber, if you have a font that is pretty, pretty thin, what's going to happen is the stitches are going to sink into the fabric, okay? So when, you know, sometimes I see that people, what they do, and I'm like looking around for stuff to show you samples. Sometimes what happens is when something is very, very fluffy, People will come out and they will select a font that is pretty thin. And when they do that, what ends up happening, you know what? I'm hold on a minute. I got an idea. I'm gonna see if I can switch. I don't think I can, but let me see. Um yeah, my battery is so low on this. <sighs> when things can go wrong. They go wrong. What can I say? It's life. It's life. Okay, so um, let me see if I can enter here and take it from here. And if I can, then I'm going to go. This is good. Sorry, sorry. I hope that did not bother you guys. Okay, sorry. Okay, that was not a good idea. Um, hold on. Let me try again, but by putting this low here. Man. Stream yard. All right. I'm going to enter. I see myself here. Here I go. That's not good. That's not good. Um,
Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Is it good? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Awesome. Okay, see? All right, now I knew I was going to get it. All right, now what I'm going to do, hold on. I'm almost there, guys. Bingo. Okay, we are in business. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Whew, took a little while. Whew, got broke some sweat, but that's okay. All right, we did it. All right, that's what matters. Okay, little rough stop, uh, little rough uh, start. Okay, <laughs> oh my goodness, tongue tied. All right, so, all right, so let's talk. All right, whew, sorry about that, guys. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Okay, so let's talk about the fonts. All right, there are block and their script. But a lot of times what happens, is there's a lot of beautiful fonts out there. But what ends up happening is sometimes you don't know what to use when, okay? So let me give you an example, okay? Right now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna go through my fonts and I'm on my MacBook. And I'm going to select a font that I consider, this is what I say, is on the thick side, okay? As you guys can see, I have a lot of fonts. Okay, so, oh, and I don't have all my fonts here. Ah, but that's all right. Okay, here we go. Here's one. Woo, I'm kind of sweaty. Now I'm like sweaty. See what happens? The pressure, the pressure. Okay, all right, so. Look at this font. This is this is what I consider that that it's a font that's like on the thick side, right? So a lot of times when you have fonts that are pretty thick and you're trying to use them on like bath towels and stuff like that, you would use the water soluble topper. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's a plastic film, okay, that dissolves in the wash and it, it looks like this, okay? So you would put this on top of your towel and then you would go ahead and you would embroider on the plastic. Now what this plastic does is it gives your threads a lift, right? So it doesn't sink into the fiber, okay? So as you can see right here, this is like a very, very, it's a pretty thick font, right? But let me show you an example of a thin font, which is what I see a lot of people use. And then I'm kind of like, mm, Let's see, like right here. This is considered a thin font, okay? Like right here, let's see if I put Carl, and then um, down here, I'm gonna put Nancy for my sister. I want you to really take a look at this font, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get and make and you know get us in there a little bit more so you guys can see, okay? As you notice right here, see how on the blue, the edge, see how it becomes so thin in certain of, the, certain of these areas, right? When it's thin like that, it's most likely going to sink into the fabric, okay? So a lot of times what happens is people will just use this topper on top of a thick uh, towel, and then they'll use a font just like the one I have on the screen that, that has Nancy's name on it. And then um, one of the things that they find out is that the longevity doesn't really last. Now, what am I talking about? Okay, what I'm talking about is that this is called water-soluble stabilizer. And it's for a reason, because once this hits water, it kind of disappears, right? So you have this underneath the font, right? So when, let's say you have a bath towel, right, or a beach towel or something like that. When you first embroider it and you put this underneath and you embroider it on the towel, right? It's going to look beautiful when you first take it out of the machine. But the thing is, when you are embroidering stuff, one of the things that I tell people to do is you really have to think about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what you're doing it on. And also think about how that product is going to be used in the future, okay? A bath towel or a beach towel, most likely, is going to be used and it's going to have to be washed. 
So when it goes into the washing machine, this topper is going to dissolve, okay? And it is no longer gonna provide that thread, the support that it needs for it to stay on top of all those fibers, okay? So what's gonna happen is at first it's gonna look gorgeous, okay? You take it out of the machine, you give it to the customer, they're gonna say, oh my God, it's beautiful, oh, I love it. And then next thing you know, they take it, they use it, they go to the beach or whatever, they, they use it up, they, they, they're loving it, they're showing it off, they put it in the washing machine and they put it in the dryer and when it comes out, what happens is they're gonna notice that the fiber goes on top of all of these stitches, especially the areas that are very, very thin, okay? So, you know, a lot of times when people have these bath towels and they'll do a font like this, that's when I come out and I say, you know, it's not that you can't do it, but the thing is you have to come up with the strategy on how you're going to be able to use this font so that when you use the bath towel or the kitchen towel or whatever it is that you're that you're embroidering on, when it goes through the washing process, it's still going to look solid, okay? This is when you can do knockdown stitches, okay? And knockdown stitches is something that's part of the enthusiast module in embroidery, okay? So what I'll usually do is under utility, First of all, let me take this out so I can show you, okay? What you would do is, first of all, I always like to move my um, my script. I always like to connect my letters, okay? So I don't know if you guys saw how I did that. When you click on it, you see these little green boxes? You click on the box and that will allow you to move the letter. Okay, so that's how you can make them a little closer, okay? So let's say I'm using this, and I really, really want this on the towel. I, I mean, I you know, I understand it's a thin font, and I know that it's going to sink into the fabric if I just use water soluble. That's when the knockdown stitches come in. And then what I do is I would highlight this, and then under, if you have enthusiasts, okay, you would hit utility, and then you would add the knockdown stitches. Now, there is something in here that I want to show you about the knockdown stitches. And right now, it's about the inflation that you see right here. If you click on this, what this is going to do, and Brilliance would like to take that. Well, okay. What this is going to, oh, should I have hit okay? Oh, 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 oh. Now my computer froze. Oh. Oh, my computer froze. This is terrible. Okay. Hold on. Oh, this isn't good. All right, guys. Hold on. It's been a long time since I had technical difficulties, and now I'm having technical difficulties. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. So let me get, let me get back in there, okay? All right. So I'm going to share my entire screen because i actually want to share the entire screen and i'm going to bring this down and i'm going to bring up this and then it's not allowing me oh man okay why did i click that i should have hit yeah i don't know why i did that that was dumb that was a smart thing that was not smart to do all right so all right Ugh. This is not going too good, is it? <laughs> All right, so you would add the knockdown stitches. And I don't have a sample of a knockdown stitch. Oh, man. Okay. All right, hold on. I'm going to try to fix this. All I have to do, I'm going to try to quit um, in Brilliance and then restart it. And then hopefully I can get it to go. I got all these windows up here open. I don't even know why. Why I got all these windows up here open? Crazy. Okay, so guys, hang in there. I, I, I'll make this worth your while. Okay, I just have to somehow, it, it, this day really um, got away from me because I, uh, oh boy, what's going on? Okay, 
I'm trying really hard to get all this stuff going. All right, I'm going to, oh, it won't let me, um, okay, I have to force quick. I have to force quick my in brilliance. Ain't that something? Force quick it. There you go. All right, here we go. All right, now I'm going to start it again. Start my in brilliance again. And let me share my entire screen again. And I'm going to take this away and close this. And I am opening it. And here we go again. All right, so where, what was the font that I used for this? Okay, and C was the name. Here we go again. All right, so, um, that, that was a pretty font too. Oh, was it Bella? Okay, let's do Bella. Well, this one's super thin, okay? So this is a really thin font. This one's called Bella font but very very super thin all right I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger okay so as you can see this is very 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 thin okay more thinner than the one we were looking at before let's see if I can add the um knockdown stitches okay and there you go perfect Whew. okay got it working all right so I want to show you guys the inflation Okay, and I'm going to do this in several steps. Now, as you can see, inflation is set at 3.3 millimeters, okay? And I'm going to hit okay, and why is it, okay, really? Okay, all right, there you go. All right, so, all right, that's 3.3 millimeters, and you see that the, that the stitches went on there. All right, let me make this smaller. And then I'm going to move, well, I'm supposed to move the whole thing. I think it's my uh, mouse, actually. That's that's kind of acting up all tacky. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to move this over here. So that was at 3.3 millimeters, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste Nancy. So as you can see the top, I have 3.3 millimeter, right? I'm gonna select this one and I'm going to add the knockdown stitches again. Now the inflation is at 3.3 millimeter. I am actually going to go all the way up to five. I want you guys to see what's gonna happen. Okay, let me make this a little bit bigger. So zoom in so you guys can actually see. Okay, because I know some people um, don't know that you can do this. It's a little bit bigger here. Mm. Hold on, guys. All right, here we go. This is perfect. I want you guys to see something. Now, remember over here, I did 3.0 millimeter adding the knockdown stitches, right? I want you to take a look at right here, the tail of the top of the end, right where I have the, the mouse. Look at the spacing right here. That's 3.3, I mean, 3.0 millimeters, okay? Now I want you to look at the one at the bottom. Look at how much more extra space I have. That's the 5.5 millimeter, okay? This is, you can adjust your knockdown stitches. Okay, so I also want to show you something else that you can do that is pretty cool. I'm going to take away this one right here. I'm going to delete this. And matter of fact, let me delete the whole thing. I want to show you from the start how I do this. All right, I got Nancy's name on here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my library and I want to select shapes. Just regular shapes. Where is it? Uh, that's novelty shapes. I just want shapes. Hold on. Outlines. There we go. All right. So, you know, we have 
all these different shapes. Hold on, I'm gonna be playing with this. I don't think it's exactly what I want, but all right, let's just you know, I kind of like those clouds that we saw up there, right? Weren't they cute? Kind of like this. Let me hit that. Okay, I got this little cloud thing going on. I'm going to stretch this cloud because I think it's a cute cloud. You don't think it's cute? I think it's cute. And I'm going to take Nancy's name. I'm just going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to put it in the cloud. Now, what I want to do is let's see what happens. I'm going to highlight the cloud, okay? I'm going to hit utility, knock down stitches. I don't want it at five. I'll do 3.5. Hit OK. Um, is it going to add it? How come it's not adding it? Hold on. Hit 9. Now it's not working for me. 1. All right. It's not that. Okay. Hold on. Wait a minute. Give me a minute. I told you I'm disorganized today. Today's not an organized day. It's not that. I know it's in library. Hold on. Not outlines. It's not outlines. Was it the Merly? I think it was the Merly. Shapes. Ooh. Okay. Here's a cloud. Hit okay. I got my little shape. That's way too big of a shape. Make it smaller. I got this. Okay. Now I'm going to hit utility. Add the knockdown stitches. Hit OK. Did you see what just happened? I just added knockdown stitches. Now I don't need this outline. I don't want it. So I'm going to go over here under flower. Highlight that. Hit delete. And now I got a fancy knockdown stitch. In, and then what I can do is I can take a bath towel that's like really like fluffy and stuff like that. And then I have this really cute, you know, the knockdown stitch. Instead of the knockdown stitch just being around the name, now I have it around the name, but it's like in a shape, right? Like a little cloud. And then. If you want, you can adjust it, but you gotta remember there's two layers to this knockdown stitch, okay? You got layer one and layer two, okay? So you gotta adjust both of them if you want to. So let me, um, let's play with this again so that you guys can get an idea, okay? So I have, you know, you have your name, okay? Cause some of you guys may wanna do this, you know, instead of just adding the knockdown stitch that just goes around every letter, you may want to like say, hey, I want to, I want the knockdown stitch, but instead of having it directly around the name, I want to have like a certain shape, like maybe a heart or something like that. So let's see what else we can do. Let's see. Um, if I go in here, where is it? And then let's say um, here's the shapes. Let's say I want a heart. Hit OK. Here's my heart. Let me make the heart a little bit. Okay, let me push this out. Let's say I want it like this, right? I want to I want to do a heart on the on the towel with the thing. And then right there, I can do utility, add the knockdown stitch. Okay. And as you can see, the knockdown stitch is now in the shape of the heart. So then I'll just go in here. Take away that that border, okay? Delete it, and then right there. Now, of course, with this, I would probably want a font that's a little bit bigger, that'll go a little nicer inside the heart. You know, something like. I probably would have chosen a different font, honestly. I think I would have chosen a different font. But but you guys get the idea, 
right? So then what will happen is like when you get the towel, it's going to have, you know, the heart and then you're going to have the name on top of it. Okay. So the thing is that, you know, you can, and, and this is the thing, you, if you have an embroidery design uh, with some kind of outline that you like, what you can do is you can do the add knockdown stitch around the whole design, then remove the design. And right there, you already have the knockdown stitch there. And then you can use those thin fonts, okay, like the one you see here on the screen. And you don't have to worry about that thin font, you know, sinking into the towel. So the customer can take that towel and wash it 20, 30, 40 times, 50, 100 times put it in the dryer all those times, and those stitches will never sink into the fiber, okay? But if you were to use just water-soluble stabilizer, this is water-soluble. So the first time that they put it in the washing machine, this is going to go away. So the stability of the thread being lifted from the fibers, it's gone. It's no longer there, okay? So what's going to happen eventually is that the thread is going to sink into the fiber. And then when they wash it, it's just going to, it's going to look kind of funky after a while. Right. And, you know, it's so to me, you know, um, let me get out of here so you guys can, um, uh, okay, hold on. Give me a minute. This is pretty. It's pretty rough. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a pretty rough evening. Okay. So I hope you guys understand like what I'm trying to say regarding um, thick and thin fonts. Okay. Um, all the fonts are beautiful. They're all gorgeous and stuff like that. But the thing is, you got to know when to use what type of font for what type of material. Okay. So, you know, and this is what I what I mean when I talk about doing embroidery, right? Um, a lot of times people think it's easy and that, you know, it, you, you just pop in the machine and go. No, there is a lot of thought that you have to put into it before you even push that button. And this is perfect example of one of those things that you have to think about. So when you have a customer that comes to you and says, hey, I bought these bath towels. Or I even have this blanket, right? Because blankets are very fu uh, fuzzy too, right? They have a lot of fluff as well. So if somebody comes to you with an item or that type of material and they say, hey, you know, I would like to get this embroidered or I want it personalized. I want it to say something. You have to look at the material. And not only do you, you want to know what it is that the customer wants to put on there, but you have to advise the customer of what are the types of fonts that are best for that type of material. A lot of times customers don't know, okay? And sometimes they don't even think of the longevity of the item. They don't think about, hey, you know, um, what's going to happen to this item once it goes into the washing machine and once I dry it? You know, they're not going to think of that. So and I always feel like it's me and, you know, as an embroiderer, because I've done this for so long and I and I know, you know, from experience what I should use and when I should use it. When I do have a customer that comes to me and says, hey, I want this type of font and I see that it's thin and it's a very thick towel. I let them know up front and I tell them, you know, I can do it for you. but." This is something that's going to have to be done if this is something that you plan on washing. I mean, I'm very upfront with them. I also let them know, because when you saw the example, when I was adding those knockdown stitches, what you're doing is you're adding extra stitches to that design. So make sure that when you are, you know, doing that and you're, you're selling and, you know, make sure you're incorporating the cost of the knockdown stitches. Okay. That's a lot of stitches, okay? So, you know, you want to make sure you let them know. And I tell them up front, you know, this is an additional cost because you are adding not just the name, you're adding the extra stitches behind the name. So in order to do that, this is how much it's going to cost. Now, the thing is, too, is, you know, when you tell them that it's an additional cost, I also tell them why, you why 
they should consider it, okay? Because a lot of times they they you know they could have the perception that you're just trying to sell them something. That's not the case. I always tell them, I said, it depends on how you're planning on using this product and also how long you want to keep it. Because and I tell and I explain to them the process and I let them know when you wash it, it's going to pop up and your your thread is going to sink in. And if you use the um, knockdown stitches, it's going to give your um, your threads that lift that it needs so that when it's in the washing machine and it's drying and all that kind of stuff, you're golden. You don't have to worry about these stitches sinking in. Once I know that I explained that to them a lot of times, and they actually most of the time, the customers always opt for the knockdown stitches because they, they understand what I'm doing, what I'm why I'm doing it, and they also know that it, you know, it's going to affect their product on the long haul. So, you know, when you are you, you know, when you're embroidering using fonts, always consider that. Consider what you are embroidering on. Okay. The other thing that I want to tell you guys also is font size. Okay. Um, a lot of you guys were asking me, like, hey, what font size do you use, you know, for certain projects and stuff like that. One of the things that I always caution people is always play around with the different sizes. There have been times like, let's say the Easter baskets, right? You have your bunny rabbit with the little cotton, you know, cotton tail and all that kind of stuff. You never want the name to overdo the design, okay? When you are embroidering a font over a design, okay, to personalize it, like on the Easter baskets, I don't have one with me. But you don't want the name to overdo it, okay? Um, here's an example, okay? This is this. These are towels that I'm I'm now embroidering, okay? They're like for kids towels. You know, kids like having um, their own little personalized hand towels. So now I'm I'm coming up with a collection of hand towels for kids. So this is one of them, and as you can see, okay, I have the the picture. But then I have the name. One of the things that I notice that sometimes people do is they'll have a small picture and then they'll go ahead and they put the, the names. The, I mean, they're like three inches, four inches and stuff like that. Um, I don't recommend doing that because what happens is it kind of looks off balance to me. Anyway, you know. Um, every time I've worked with customers, they they kind of want something that looks balanced. So always take a look at your design, and then also um, when you when you're trying to select the the, the type of font size that you want to use to to go with that design, try the different designs out. And this is another thing: print your designs, print them. Okay, and if you're working for for a customer and they don't know what size of font they want, use the print, the print option in Embronix, okay? Go in there, create the design, do the different font size, okay? And then hit print. That way they have a visual because that printout is the actual visual of, and I had a printout, I had a printout. It's an actual visual of how, oh, I don't think I have it anymore, okay. Oh, yeah, I don't have it anymore. I'm a mess. Okay, so it's an actual print. Uh, I'm still looking for it, too. Do I have it here? No. All right, that's fine. It is what it is. Okay. Oh, uh, spaghetti beans. Okay, so anyway, so. <laughs> All right, so the printout is, is the actual image of what the embroidery is going to be. Okay. And it's really great for when you meet your customer. So if your customer doesn't know if they want it one inch or two inch or one and a half or one and a quarter, create them with the different sizes, print them out right next to it. This is a one inch font. This is a one and a quarter. This is a one and a half. This is a two inch. That way they have an actual visual. They can look at it, okay? And they can select which ones they want, okay? Now, when it comes to the bunny rabbit baskets that I was making, um, I did not go more than 1.25 inches in the name. 
they depend on the name uh, on the name also if the name only had like four or five letters it was a very short name it was 1.25 inches okay if the name was long i did one inch or if it if it went too too past you know too big for the um the hoop i just shortened it up i squeezed it in until it was it was able to fit into the hoop that's how i did the easter baskets because i got a lot of questions about what size font what size font did you use um you don't want if you're putting a name like let's say if you're putting a name that's like in the middle of the design the last thing you want is to do like a big huge font okay you want it to proportion it correctly so that way it doesn't overtake the design okay you get to see the name but it's not like all over the design where it kind of like eats it up right you want to have a very good uh balance all right so um yeah that's the other thing for fonts and stuff um let me see what else let's let's play a little bit with this also let me go back in here okay i'm gonna present again guys all right we're going right back in here into my here we go into it brilliance all right so now i taught you guys about the uh the knockdown stitches right and you see how um you know how cool it is that you can you can modify you know the um the knockdown stitches to different shapes because that's kind of fun to do and it's really great for blankets another thing too um that i also want to show you as well while we're here okay a lot of times what happens is people they take this right here which is the knockdown stitches they match the color to the actual towel okay so one of the things that i want to do is i want to show you guys something venture out a little bit so as you can see i highlighted the knockdown stitches underlay right well, i got a lot of underlays in there okay i think i overdid it with the underlays but anyway i'm gonna go in here and i'm just gonna pick a color now i want you guys to see what i'm trying to do here I didn't mean the letter. Well, let me see. That looks cute. There you go. All right. You can, you know, I one of the things that I that I say is explore. Don't be afraid to explore. Okay. Like think of. I want you to visualize. Let's say I have a baby blue baby blanket. Okay, a knitted baby blue baby blanket. And I want to add knockdown stitches and a name. Who said the rule of thumb has to be that the knockdown stitches have to match the color of your blanket? It doesn't, right? So what I would do is I would say, hey, why don't you change the color of the knockdown stitch so that way the knockdown stitch can pop, especially if you're doing what I did right here, where your knockdown stitch is forming a shape okay that is pretty cute all right you can have a cloud or a heart or something like that so like let's say i'm gonna delete that okay and let me let me pick a, a more simple uh font here oh no that's not simple okay let's let's pick a a simple font let me see where where am i oh that's too big um here we go oh that's way too big okay oh it's because i'm all right so i'm using a uh what kind of hoop is this that i have here selected a five by five okay let's do the eight by nine all right it's all right so i got nancy's name here and and let's let's try this again let's um go to the library here 
I want to pick another another shape. Isn't the St. Patrick's Day coming up? There we go. I'll do that. Okay, so here's that. Okay, obviously this one's a little too big, right? So I'm going to change the font. Change it. Uh, a Disney font here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add my knockdown stitches. I'm going to do a three. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to take away, deleting now this, 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 this thing. And I got Nancy's name in here. Now I can actually highlight her name and I can actually make it a little bigger. And that's fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to take all the underlays, change the color, deep rose. There we go, and white. And then a lot of times, too, what I do with fonts, just to let you guys know, sometimes you guys want to make it a little bit thicker, right? You don't, you know, you like the thickness, but you want to add a little thick to it. If you want to make it a little thicker, right under here where it says stitch, click on that. See where it has comp? Okay. I want you guys to look at this as I increase the comp, okay? I'm going to go slow. Did you see how it jumped? That's two. Look, I'm going to jump it again. See how it made it thicker? Okay, that's another trick. Okay, it's something that, that a lot of people sometimes don't know. Okay, that you can make the, the, the font a little bit thicker by increasing the comp. So if you want to know where the comp is, highlight your letters, okay? Go under the, the, the tab that says stitch, and right here it's going to say comp. See, I have it all the way to five. I always just increase it to two or three. I don't, I don't go all the way thick, thick. Two or three for me is fine. I, I'm happy with two or three. And, you know, I mean, I don't do it all the time, but if I feel that, you know, it's a little bit too much on the thin side and I just want to add a little thickness to it, then I'll go ahead and I'll just, um, oh, did I freeze? Okay, you guys can hear me, right? <laughs> and I hope so. Let me see. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, you guys can. Okay. All right. That's why I'm trying to play it there. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, all right. So, enough with the knockdown stitches. Okay. Now, a lot of times people ask me, do you think enthusiasm is worth it? Yeah. I do because just of that and you don't even have to do it like this I mean if you you know if you don't like the um the the you know if you if you're just happy doing this which is just um add the knockdown stitches right to the word nothing wrong with that change the color so it looks a little nothing wrong with that you know, it, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? But it's just a, something a little extra that you can do and have more fun with your knockdown stitches. And it's something else that you can offer people too. So, you know, it's just something that I just wanted to share. Um, okay, so we talked about thin fonts. We talked about the thick fonts. Um, we talked about when you're supposed to use what type of fonts. You know, you got to really think about it. Not all fonts are great. Um, the other thing that I want to show you about fonts is to is when you are um, trying to utilize fonts. Sometimes what happens is people 
by fonts and they sometimes don't know if they have letters and all that and letters, numbers, and the punctuation points and all that stuff. To know what information regarding your font or at least the one that you're using, like right here, I have like the Sticktopia Disney font, right? Selected, right? Um, if you go under font, right, and right here you have this little I tab that you see right here, click on that, and right there it's going to pop up this, okay? And what it's going to do is, and I know it looks really small on your screen, but it says available characters, and then it has all the capitals, okay? Let me, let me get the pointer out of the way. Yeah. It has all the capitals. It has all the small letters. Then it has the numbers one all the way through nine, and it even has some symbols underneath, okay? Not all fonts have all this information in there, okay? There have been times when I have purchased fonts. Let me take all this stuff out of here. Where I have purchased fonts, and then all of a sudden, it's like, it's like I don't have that, you know? Let me see where I can show you a perfect example of that. Um, Oh, that has everything. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Where's a font that? Okay. You know, right when I... <laughs> All right, hold on. I guess dystopia gives you everything. All right, let me see right here. The fish tail. There you go. So this is one for really monograms, right? But if you notice, it's all just capitals and small letters. That's what it says right there, the capitals and small letters. It doesn't say that it has the numbers and it doesn't have the symbols. Now, when you want to, if you want to use this font and you want to add a symbol, then one of the things that I recommend that you do is like, let's say if I want to do JM, right, and I want to add the and sign up between these two, what I recommend you do is just highlight it, move it, and then pick another font that has that and sign. Like, I know Stitchtopia. And then type in, and that's the answer sign for that one. Oh boy, that's that's not what I like. Okay, hold on. Try to get one with an answer sign that I like, and this one doesn't have an answer sign. And look, um, click on here. Notice this one, Twilight Stitch. It only has the upper and it only has the lower. It doesn't have any of that symbol as well. See, so um. There you go. University has it. And university has, wow, this is, this is, uh, this is interesting. Okay. It has the upper, it has the lower, it has all these symbols, it has the numbers, and then it even has like special characters. Okay. Um, alternative characters, you know, like it has the N with the little tail on it. I know that that's used in the Spanish language a lot. Um, and then I would just take this and I would just put it under in the middle and then there you go. That's how I would do that. Okay. So, um, you know, not all fonts that you buy will have everything under the sun. Okay. I mean, so sometimes when you buy them, um, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll show like a table, right? So you could to see how the different fonts look, right? So I really recommend that before you buy those fonts, take a look at that at that um, document. Make sure that you look at it so that way you can see if, if you're going to like the way the letters are actually going to look. Because I have purchased fonts where, you know, sometimes they look cute, but then when I'm using them for a particular word, it doesn't really give me the look that I was going for. And not every letter looks great in that in that font, right? 
And I'll give you an example, okay? Let me give you another example of that. I'll just go to another one. Now, let's look at this one. This is one of my favorite fonts, okay? It's called the Maya from Stitchtopia. And they have, if you look on the side over here, um, well, they really have three different versions. And I right here, I only have two. So let's look at the letter J. I find that this is very common with the letter J. This one right here, if you read on it, it says Maya number two, one inch, right? And this is how the letter J looks, okay? So I'm going to move it over here, and then I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste it, and then I'm going to move the second one here. So I want to take this second one, and I'm going to change it to Maya number three. Oh, it looks the same. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Maya number one looks different, and I don't have it on here. That sucks. Okay. So let me see. I'll use Grace. Oh, uh, no. That's all right. Um, All right, let's look at faith. Hold on. I'm on a roll tonight, ain't I? My goodness. <laughs> oh, going the wrong way. Okay, that's fate number one. Where's fate number two? There you go. All right. Um. But that looks cute too. I kind of like them both. Okay. All right. So, all right. So that's a bad example. Well, anyway, what's the letter that sometimes looks kind of funky? The letter I, I think. Hold on. And I'm going to show you something also that I do. All right. That's the letter J. Okay. Hold on. Let me show you also something that I do. Okay. Let's say that I have a font and I don't like the way the font looks, right? Or the first letter, the way it looks, right? Like my name is kind of, you know, like, all right, this is uh, my name. Okay. Um, hold on. Let's say that I want a different J. Oh, that's great. I deleted the whole thing. So what I will do is I will type everything but the J. The first letter, right? And I like the way these letters look together, okay? But I might want like a different start of a J or something like that. I can go and just pick another font with the letter J. And then, I mean, you know, it, I wouldn't do it like that. But you know what I mean, okay? So, like, let's say you don't like the way it curves or something like that. Just look for another script font with the letter J. Um, yeah, I don't like the way that J looks, that's for sure. Okay. Um, let's say I like that one. I really don't. I don't like that one. See, and this is what I mean. Sometimes you don't like the way the first letter looks. So just pick a letter from another font and then you can merge it together. Because the thing is not, you know, not every letter in every font is looks great. You know, it's very rare that you buy a set where you fall in love with every single letter that's there. Okay. So you can always mix and match. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. You can mix and match fonts, okay, and stuff. So, um, yeah, so you can mix and match them. And customers aren't really going to know, you know. To me, what's important is that it looks nice, that it really looks nice and it looks, it looks good. Sometimes, you know, the letter Y is a little funky, the letter I is a little funky, the letter W can sometimes be a little funky too. Um, you know, so yeah, so I wanted to show you that. Now, uh, let me see. Hold on. 
I'm over here thinking what else about fonts. Now let, let's talk a little bit about monograms too. All right. Monograms are pretty popular, right? And I do have some sets in here. I think it's down here. And this is like the circle monogram. Okay. Now these are kind of um, you know, there there's usually three initials. And a lot of times you are, I know I used to get this wrong. Okay. I always thought that when you do the um these types of initials on shirts, that usually it was first, first initial, middle initial, last name, right? Wrong. This is supposed to be your middle and your middle name, your I mean your first name. This is supposed to be the last name, the middle. That's your last name. And then this is supposed to be the middle. That's how it's supposed to be. And this one, how it's supposed to be is J, W, oops, is it like that? J, W, hold on, J, W, M. That does not look like a circle to me, right? J, W, M. Yeah, that don't look like no circle to me. Okay, so that got to get the directions. There are directions on how to do some of these. Stitchtopia has a um a legend, which of course now I can't find. That's ridiculous. Okay, here we go. I'm in the wrong folder. All right, here we go. So Stitchtopia, okay, will give you like a VX sample right and what it is is this tells you what key to hit for what position so this is supposed to be j and then a cap j All right, <laughs> we, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Okay, it's supposed to be J, W, and then the last one. Oops. No, small J, capital W, and the eagle. Did that work? It didn't work. Okay, so I gotta get I, I got this one wrong. But maybe it's this one that's supposed to work. Hold on, hang in there with me, guys. I know I'm there it is. Okay, so I I had the wrong key with the wrong font. Okay. Let me move this out because you guys can't see. There you go. This looks like a circle. Okay. And this is another thing too. Sometimes this doesn't look good with everything. Because I remember, what was it? I think it was the E or the V or something that a customer didn't like. But I was like, that's the way it looks. That's, that's, and that's what she wanted. And notice how when I hit enter, I have to separate. Okay. I always put the spaces between the letters because what happens is the, the software just squishes it all together and then you're not going to be able to really make it out. Okay. So this is actually the V. Yeah. The V. I don't think it is. W, I think, no, the V, and then hold on. Let me see what the L looks like. Yeah. See the L looks very similar to the V. So the customer was like, is that a V or is that a L? You know what I mean? So 
it's it's like you know you got to play with the fonts one of the things that i really really and, and seriously guys i i always say you can't go wrong by doing this you know, i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to normal 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 stuff okay one of the things i highly recommend because what ends up happening is you're going to notice that sometimes um customers like they have this vision of what a font or or how the initials are going to come out okay i strongly 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 recommend that you always ask the customer what are the initials that you want in border go ahead in the software create it print it out and make sure they see it don't ever assume that they're going to like how it's going to look because sometimes what happens is just like when we buy fonts and we think they're going to look a certain way and then when we go and we type it in the software we're like mm, i didn't know that that l was going to look like that or the letter j or the letter w was going to look like that and it was kind of funky and then you're like oh this isn't going to work and then you go and you change right it's gonna happen the same thing with the customers. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna have this expectation, go, yeah, yeah, I want a script, and this is the script I want, but yet they didn't see the actual name created with that particular font. So always make sure that you print it out and you show it to them and say, this is what it's gonna look like, okay? Usually what I do is I go into the software and um, because sometimes I'll be talking to them through text, so what you can do, which is real easy, that way you don't even have to waste your ink or anything on the printer. Just do it in Brilliant, take a screenshot of it, and then text them that screenshot. So right there by the screenshot, they can look on their phone and they can see right there, yes, I like the way it looks, or no, I don't, I'm not feeling it. You know what I'm saying? And then you can go ahead and you can select another font and all that kind of stuff. The last thing you want is for them to come out and say no no no, this is the font i want then they walk away and then you go and you embroider it and then when they come to pick it up they're like oh i didn't you know that's not i didn't think that's how it was gonna work look you know because then what ends up happening is they're feeling the kind of way you're going to be feeling some kind of way and you really didn't do anything wrong you did exactly what they told you to do you know what i'm saying so i'm just saying you know so um yeah, there are so many different types of fonts and everything. You really got to pay attention to the fonts that you are purchasing. Make sure that you are looking at each of the letters individually, that you like the way they look. And, you know, when you're purchasing them, think about what how you're going to be using these fonts as well. Are you going to be using them for names? Are you going to be using them to create uh, phrases and stuff like that? Because that way, when you are putting the fonts together you kind of have a better idea how you're going to use them right so you know you don't want to like you know say hey i'm going to be doing dinner napkins right and i want to use this script font and you know and let me tell you you know you don't have to use fonts that are like specified as for initials you can use any font okay for a monogram you literally can Okay, all you gotta do is just use that capital letter and then you just adjust the sizes however you want it and stuff like that. Yeah, and let me give you an example. All right, I'm gonna show you. I told you we're gonna be doing this a lot. Okay, so let me let me go back and I'm gonna show you what I mean. Okay, so here we go. We're going to in brilliance again. Okay, let me show you. Okay, let's say you want to do a monogram but you you know you want to use a regular font okay you don't want to just go ahead and you don't want to use a font they they consider monogram okay so i'm gonna go in here well that's a monogram font but there was one the the thrones that that's like a right when i want the fonts that's when i can't find them hold on where are you now? Okay, hold on. I'm going to look for a particular font that I was using before. I know I'm going kind of fast. I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy while I'm doing this. Okay, here we go. The Thrones one. Bing. Okay, I really like this font. I used this font for a monogram before. Usually, the rule of thumb is that the middle um, letter is bigger 
than the ones on the side, okay? So like right here, what I'll do is I will go ahead and I'm gonna put JW and I'm gonna hit enter, okay? Those, those are, well, no, JM. There you go. And as you see right here, I picked one inch, right? This is a one inch, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this M and I'm just gonna move it aside. That's all I'm gonna do, just gonna move it aside. Then what I'm gonna do is I have to pick the W for my last name. So I'm gonna click here again, and instead of doing one inch, maybe I'll do one and a half. And then what I'll do is I'll just do my W. There you go. And then I have my W right there. So now I'm gonna go back up here and highlight my J and my, my M. And then what I'm gonna do is I just move it. And I'm gonna move this here. And then I'm gonna take the J and I'm gonna move this here. Okay. And there's my uh, monogram. Now, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't like the way that looks because I think the W is a little bit too much on the wide side and it's not really, monograms are supposed to look a little closer. So to me, I think I will go in here and I'll probably search for another monogram, you know, another W to put in there that, and this is the other thing too, you know, the rule of thumb to me is like, you know, you can do anything. I mean. Let me see. Let me see how cute it would look if I did a script in the middle. different it's different you know and i can even have this like you know interlocking and stuff but maybe right there i kind of do like that w but i think i would change this font the j and the m to maybe something else that's maybe um times new roman maybe um no, definitely not that That looks kind of cute. I kind of like this. What do you guys think? This is different. You know what I'm saying? I kind of like this, you know? Very, very, very different, you know? Real cute, different. It's like first initial, middle initial, my last name, and then it's script, okay? And then what I kind of like is that it's kind of interlocking. Now, I could do everything the same color, you know? Um, But I kind of like the different colors, actually. I kind of like the different colors because I feel like that would have made it pop-like. See, that's why I kind of really, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest, guys. That's one of the things, this is what I love about embroidery. I kind of like that. I kind of really like that. I think I'm going to save this and I'm going to be using this on one of my shirts and I'm going to be putting this or on my sleeve or something. That looks so cute. I like this. I don't care what anybody said. I like this. Look at that. And then you can just make the whole thing smaller. 
and put it on a hat. This would look cute on a beanie. This would look cute on a beanie. If this would look cute on a scarf, okay. If if you know if you're gifting a scarf, this would have been this would have looked really cute as a Christmas gift. This would even look cute on a tote bag. That came out cute. I'm in. You know, I really like this one. I really like. I don't know if you guys like it, but I think it's cute. I think this is really cute. But see, this is what I'm talking about with font explore play with them there is no rules really you know what i'm saying um you know i mean this is this is really what i'm uh, what i kind of like wanted to really get and, and tell you guys um today um is that when it comes to fonts have fun with them explore mixing them up explore using them for different things i mean and then think about it. that font that i just had on the screen what if I add the knockdown stitches? That would even look cute on a towel, on a bath towel. You know, if you want to gift it to somebody, you could put the heart or, you know, or a, a square or a different shape or something like that. Add the knockdown stitches for the shape and then put the monogram right on top of it. That would look cute. Or you could put that monogram on pillowcases. Okay, you can make it big and put it on pillowcases so they can dress up their room. You can buy pillowcases from Walmart, real cheap, you know? I mean, just standard pillowcases. Standard pillowcases, hoop them, put the monogram on them. And then you don't even have to do it on the actual pillowcase. Do it on the band, on the side. Okay, take a pillowcase, hoop it up, and you can put the person's name going down or, or just the monogram or stuff like that. There's just so many things you can do. I'm telling you, embroidery, you can be so creative. I mean, it's it's funny because sometimes people are like, you in that laptop, you're, you're on that laptop all day. But it's because I'm always playing around with the brilliance and I'm always looking at all the different fonts that I have. I'm looking at different designs and I'm looking at what if I take this design and this design and merge it? What if I, I, I take this letter and this letter and put it together and, and stuff like that? And I like making different stuff. And then sometimes I'm like, man, that's really unique. That's like so cool. And then next thing you know, whoop, you got a really great gift for somebody, you know? I mean, you know, and it's, you can do so, so, so much. I'm, you really, really, really truly can. So guys, I am over the hour, okay? I know I really didn't give you much because I, I kind of, you know, first of all, I had technical difficulties in the beginning, okay, um, because my laptop was not fully charged, and now, now it is, but my laptop was not fully charged, so I'm actually talking to you guys from the um, from the machine, and then I wasn't, I didn't have time to do the lighting, you know, I, I was just a mess today, and, and I am kind of, I'm, I'm a little exhausted and stuff, so, um, because I had a lot of orders that I had to get out. And I got them out. I met my deadlines and stuff like that. Um, I still have one order that I have to do. But I'm waiting for the payment. Because I don't turn that machine on for free. You know me. Um, when the payment comes, the machine turns on. If there's no payment. There's no um, there's there's no machine that's on. Because that's just how, how I do and stuff. So, um, and I want to double check and see if... Um, because I asked, I said, hey, did you get the invoice? And I haven't heard anything. And I think this is invoices. I don't know, she. I'll have to check later. Okay, I'll just check later. And so it doesn't look like. Did she? Oh, I don't know. And stuff. So, nope. She hasn't. Okay, so when she pays, she gets. She gets the service. That's all. <laughs> I mean, I have everything ready. I got the little shirt up there and stuff. It's already hoop. Oh, as soon as I hear the ching ching, then I'll take that and I'll like shoot and I'll be um embroidering her logo and stuff like that. And then I'll be done with that. I even have the machine set up and everything. So it's ready to go and everything. And then I want to keep 
I'm making more of these um, different samples of um, towels for kids um, because this was something that, that came to my mind because I found these towels and they were pretty inexpensive. They were not pricey at all. And I was like, oh, and then I, I thought to myself, you know what, I can, you know, these, are, these will make cute hand towels for kids. And I was thinking I could just do their name or, but then I was like, why just do their name? Why don't I just have fun with it and, and do little like bathroom designs and stuff on it and then put a child's name on it and then just sell them. And these are, you know, because they're small towels, they're not big. See, there's those small towels. Um, these are great for them to like have in their bathroom and, you know, brush their teeth, wipe their, their mouth or whatever. And I figured, okay, so let me make some of these and, um, you know, and, and just some, I mean, you know, I won't, I won't sell them for too much, but, you know, because they're really not, not that expensive and they're, they're going to be that expensive to sh to, sh you know, ship too. So I'm kind of like, all right, so I'm going to try to do a collection of children hand towels and, um, you know, and put them on my Etsy site and see how it does. Because um, I have been working on so many orders that I have not had a chance to actually work on new products. Right. So the this weekend is on hold. I am not working on anybody's orders. I already told people no. Um because I don't want to. Um, and I just, okay, I just got a customer that that texted me about his shirts and I have to do his test design. So here I go. Okay, so, all right, I'll have to work on that order for sure. Okay, so, and I have I have to do the test, test design. So, all right, so I got to backtrack. So, all right, so I am going to be working on an order, I guess. Okay. But I do want to um, expand on, on the lines of the products that I do have on the Etsy shop and stuff. So one of the things that I want to do is I like doing the kitchen towels, but then I figured let me expand the line to children's towels and see how that goes, you know, and stuff. So, But I, I don't want to do big, heavy towels and everything because, like I said, you know, depending on the towel, then you got to do knockdown stitches and all that kind of stuff. And, of course... The hand towel, you know, hand towels are, are um, you know, they're they're inexpensive to get and they're easier to embroider. If I end up doing big bath towels, I gotta involve knockdown stitches. That's gonna take a long time to stitch. And you know, people when they buy those type of things online and and you try, you know, and you want to price it correctly because you gotta charge for all that extra stitching, people aren't gonna want to, uh, you know, um, pay. That's what I'm thinking. People may not, you know, they're going to get a little stick, you know, stingy. And, you know, and, and it's not that they're going to get stingy. I mean, you know, let's be real. You know what I'm saying? I mean, um, everything is up. Everything is pricey. You know, it's like everywhere I go, everything's like, how much? You know, and everything's like so super expensive. So it's like, so I kind of understand kind of understand. So I'm going to go say hi to you guys and everything. Let's go down and um, let's. Sorry guys. Okay, I took myself out. I'm I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll today. Ain't I? The technical difficulties are all over the place. All right. So let me see. Let me go down and say hi to you guys as always, and answer any questions that you guys may have. Hey Cynthia, how you doing? Hey Tammy, I see Jenny, Marlene, Susan. How you doing? I see Nancy, Levasa. Jackie, Robin, Judy, Aaron, Eartha, Faith. Um, let's see, Angela. Um, hey, Miss Max, how you doing? Um, hey, Beth, how are you? Oh, thanks. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Hey, baby giant, how you doing? Hey, Karen. Um. <laughs> Let's see, Kathy, Robin. Um, oh, okay. Could you tell me the best solid towel for the price? I use silky, it's expensive. Where do you get the fluoride large spools from? Okay, Beth, I'm going to tell you something. 
personally, this is me. I don't know if anyone else in the chat has any other type of experience, okay? And if you do, let me know. I don't pay too much for my water soluble stabilizer. Go on Amazon and get them. I'm telling you, and do the price comparison. The thing is, you are you are using the silky, and yes, silky is expensive, and you're probably, and I'm sure there's a reason for it. Maybe I don't know, but the thing is, to me, water soluble topper is really the same thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it may be maybe a little thicker. I don't know, but it works. This works just as good for me, and I get it off of um, Amazon, and sometimes I get it from All Stitch. Okay. But um, allstitch.com. But if you find this on on Amazon, I purchased it from Amazon and I use it and it works just as good. Okay. Um, I've heard of the Silky one and I've used some of their products, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I kind of stopped using this the the Silky stuff. Um, I I used the, the Tender Touch. And I don't think that's Silky though. I don't think that's Silky, but. Their brand, uh, for me, I find it very pricey too. So, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, venture out and try. Because what I would do is when, you, when you're when looking at other brands to try out, buy the small amounts. Just so that way you don't feel like, oh my God, I bought all this and now I don't like it and now I'm stuck, right? So usually what I do is if I see something out there that's a little bit cheaper than when I buy it, it's a different brand that I'm not familiar with. I'll just buy, but I'll buy like the small roll and I'll say, okay, um, let me try it. And if I like it, great. Then the next time I buy, I'll buy the bigger roll, right? Or if I don't like it, then fine. I'll just suck it up and just use it. And then, you know, I know not to buy it again because I, I didn't, I wasn't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? So that's usually how I do it. Now, the Floria large spools, I don't get Floria large spools. I usually have the small ones. I have not found any place that sells the large spools. I'm going to start looking now because they're asking because I'm wondering if they do have them. Um, I usually get those um, and someone... Um, commented and they were trying to tell me how to say it uh, i think it's florina florina or something like that well anyway what you got on the screen okay <laughs> okay i usually buy those mic threads from a sewing shop that's right by me now the reason why i like to go to the sewing shop is because i like really to support them um it's a small business and stuff i bought all my embroidery machines from them too um but you know you can buy that online as well but i always like to go to the sewing shop because when i go to the sewing shop she always gives me 20 percent off because i you know i've always bought all my machines from her um stuff so um yeah but i hope that helps your um you know answer um you know i hope that helps you out um judy you know the my sister will be going to the um the sewing and quilt expo nancy will be there that's for sure hey emma how are you doing um let's see hey needle point in time how you doing hey sam um Love you. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you like the and you're learning and stuff that you like the videos and stuff. Um, what is it? Judy said, as long as we're not looking at the grass and not up at it, we're all good. Okay, I didn't get that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I think I may have lost some viewers and stuff because I know that um Oh, sorry, you're having a bad day. We're here for you. Thank you, Jenny. Um, yeah, it's just, um, eh, you know, technical stuff, you know. Um, I wasn't really prepared. I was rushing and all that kind of stuff, so kind of rough. Hey, Danielle, how you doing? Hey, Jackie. Um, okay, I see you guys are saying, can't hear me. Okay, brief, Jeanette, it's all good. Yeah, it it happens right it, it happens it's life and so hey crafty puerto rican how you doing 
Um, hey, Ozzy, how are you? How's you doing? Hey, Michelle, hey, pretty eyes, how are you doing? Um, ah, okay. Without a pile. I don't use the word. Okay. When, um, Iris, I don't use, this is the other thing too. Um, I'm glad that Iris had put that in there. Not all material requires you to use this, okay? That's another thing that I noticed. A lot of people overuse this, okay? You don't have to use this all the time. This is just to give the, the, the thread a little lift from the fabric. That's all it is, okay? So if you have a piece of fabric that is solid, okay? Like here, I would want a little lift because it does have a little bit of fuzz, right? But if I was using, if I, like, let's say I'm embroidering on my shirt, okay? This fabric is very, very solid. There is no, no fuzz. There is, there, the fibers are not lifting up or anything like that. It's just a st straight fabric, okay? In this type of fabric, I would not be using water-soluble stabilizer, okay? There's no need for it. The fabric, the, you know... The fabric is not going to swallow up the thread, okay? The thread is going to lay nicely on top of the fabric. But I do see a lot of times when people are embroidering anything, it's like they take this out and they put it on top of the fabric. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, you're wasting it because actuality, you know, I don't even, did I say that name? I don't, I don't think I said that word right, but y'all know what I mean. In reality. This didn't do nothing for you because the fabric is fine, okay? You're, you know, you're not, the, the, the thread's not going to sink inside of it. So there was no need for this, okay? Um, I see people when they're embroidering shirts and stuff, they use this stuff. And it's like, you don't, you don't have to. You don't have to. So, yeah. So just want to let you guys, so I'm glad that, that you pointed that out, Iris. Um. Let's see. You need your wine. Where is it? I know. I had some water here and stuff, and I didn't bring too much. I should have brought more water, and I didn't. I'm out of water. <laughs> um, hey, Tana, how are you doing? Hey, J-Love, how are you? Um, hey, Pam, how are you doing? Um Get a bag maker to make notebook holders. I'll volunteer. You are so good. <laughs> I am, and you know what I'm I'm doing also? I was trying to do this as well. These are like the um sanitizer holders, right? So I had like a whole bunch of yellow vinyl, right? So I said, let me buy this design and let me make this. And see if people would be interested in purchasing this for their kids, right? Because this is like the one for the two inch. So you take this and you, you put it in. And I figured they can, you know, hook this up to their book bag, you know. And then they have their hand sanitizer and they can hook it up to their book bag. So um, I didn't put it on the Etsy shop yet, um, but I... Put it on the community website to see if somebody would be interested in purchasing it. And I, I didn't get any hits. I got a lot of hits for the Easter baskets. I just didn't get any hits for this. But um, I figured, okay, that's fine. So I didn't make that many. I just made, um, you know, two big ones. And then I made one small one. So I figured I'll put this on the Etsy shop as well and see if, Somebody would be interested in it, you know, and I'll just make sure I reasonably price it. And then, you know, I'm not going to, of course, I'm not going to offer free shipping on it and stuff like that. And we'll see how it goes. I really want to put more stuff on the shop. Um, and the thing is, too, is I kind of like am mad at myself because I had all this yellow vinyl, right? And then I was like, I don't know what it is. You know how you have brain farts, you know, it's like you think. Oh, this is going to sell. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, right? Because I think I got a big head over the Easter baskets, right? And when I made all these Easter baskets, everybody bought them, everybody loved it and stuff. And I went here, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sell like crazy, right? So 
put that out there. Nobody bought one. Okay. And then this is what I did, which I, I could shoot myself for, is that I took all my yellow vinyl and I pre-cut it. And I pre-cut it so that I could make these. So now I haven't even sold one, and now I got all this pre-cutted vinyl, which I should have just had a roll of vinyl because I could have used that vinyl for another project, but it is what it is. So I told myself, all right, Jeanette, you know, uh, what I could do, which I'll probably end up doing is maybe I'll sew them anyway just for fun, and then what I will do is I'll donate them to a school or something like that, you know, and, and um, or to people that I know have kids, right? I'll just say, hey, you have kids, here you go. Um, give these to your kids, just put some sanitizer on them and good to go. You know, I'll just donate them either way. But they are fun to make, I will say. These are these are pretty fun to make um, and stuff. And this was pretty fun to make too, but I'm going to, and I'm going to keep at it because I want to, you know, I have one that's like a sewing machine. This is the one with the embroidery machine. So I want to make these um, because, like I said, I want to be able to give something to, to the folks um, that do the, the Christmas in July gift exchange. Um, so I just want to do something, I wanna, you know, um, and I want to try to use what I have in house. Um, so that way I don't, you know, have to spend that much money because I know I'm going to have to spend when I start shipping out everything. Cause those shipping costs cost a lot because every, every time I do a gift exchange, it's about like 500 bucks to come out of my pocket because I have to get the gifts and then I have to ship everything to everybody. And it's all like change, 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 you know, <laughs> but it's okay. It's all worth it. Um, because I know that. You know, I don't know. I just like doing it because I know that, you know, people really enjoy it. They have a good time. And I really like, I get I get a really good feeling and, and a kick out of seeing all the different things that people make, you know, and stuff. And it's like, I think it's awesome. So I don't, I don't mind doing it. It's fine. It's, it's, it's going to be okay. So yeah, but I, I actually want, you know, the thing is, like the notebooks, I bought the notebooks and I did the stickers and I just put the stickers on top of the notebook. But I actually want to make something for everyone. So I'm probably going to do maybe hand sanitizers for everybody. But if I start early, then I can have enough for everybody. So that way all I have to do is just package them up and ship them out and stuff like that. So I'm thinking about doing hand sanitizer holders and um, snap tabs uh for for everybody and stuff so i'm looking for different designs and everything like that so you know to see so yeah so it'll be it'll be good it'll be fine and stuff but i will announce that on our facebook group when the gift exchange is going to take off okay and you know um i'm going to be monitoring it and all that good stuff and everything and stuff and as we get closer to the to when I, I I actually go in to create the link and all that kind of stuff, I will announce that more on the the Fridays coming up, okay? And so so yeah, Christmas in July. That's good. so I think instead of doing this event once a year, I'll probably do it twice a year, though, you know, and stuff because it looks like everybody seems to like it. Um, are you um? No, those shapes that I used, Danielle, actually were part of the Merly, um, the Merly uh, module. Okay, but the thing is, if you have shapes, any any other type of embroidery file that is shaped, you can pull that in, do the knockdown stitches, and then take out the design. So it doesn't have to be that. Okay, you can take another design. Do the knockdown stitch and then take that design away and then you're good. Um, but the shapes, it, it, they, I don't know. The ones that I used were for, from uh, from the Merly, the Merly patches. It wasn't from Stitch Artist. Um, I think that is separate. You have to pay for that option. For the Merly, yeah, the Merly, the Merly is is another option. It's, it's another module than the um, Enthusiast. Enthusiast is another module also, and so. 
the one of the things I will say this, I mean, I know that that a lot of folks come out and, they, and they're kind of like, God, embroidery software is expensive. It is. It really, truly is, you know. But one of the things that I will say that I like about in Brilliance is that you can pick the modules that you want. OK, so, you know, it's like you can build it to what you need it to be. So it's like the first one is, of course, the essentials. Right. And that's like the basics. OK. But then if you want to do patches, then you could buy the Merle module. If you want to add knockdown stitches to designs and stuff like that, you would do the enthusiasts and stuff. If you want to start doing your own type of digitizing, then you would go ahead and do stitch artists one, two, or three, depending on the different types of digitizing that you want to do. So that is one of the things that I do like about the package is that you kind of build it to what it is that you need. You don't have to get every single module that's there. I don't even own all the modules, okay? Literally today, I bought the Ace One because I saw that, I think it was Miss Max or somebody, they bought it and they're like having too many too much fun with it, okay? So I saw all the great stuff that she was doing with it, like making patches and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, I want to try to do that too. So I went out there and I, I actually purchased it today. I haven't had a chance to look at it or play with it yet. But um, there are different modules to it. So it depends on what it is that you need. Okay. So it's kind of like, you know, that's what I kind of like about it. You know, you can buy it in little pieces and stuff and you buy it as you need it. Um, you know, that is one thing that I do enjoy. Um, Hey, Christina, how you doing? Um, hey, Pearl, I am new with this, and I'm using the, the free version, and it doesn't give me the utility option for the knockdown stretch. Trying to learn the software before I purchase it. And, Pearl, and that's what I, I, I do recommend that you do that because what you want to do is you want to make sure um, that you buy what you are comfortable with, okay? That's why when a lot of times people come on, they say, hey, what about, your, your machine, you know, embroidery machine, what embroidery machine should I buy or what embroidery software should I buy? There's so many different, that are different um, machines and there's different software out there, right? Everyone's learning curve is very, very different. Some people learn faster. Some people like, you know, like have different styles of learning. So to me, I always say, look at each, and, and I like the way you're doing it, okay? And that's the, the approach that I usually tell people. Go after the free version, okay? See how you feel about it. See if you like it, you know, try to learn about it and stuff. And if this, if you like it and you feel that it's easy to understand and stuff like that, that's when you should go and go, okay, fine. This is what I want, okay? Now, the one, you know, the utility option, you will get that when you um, actually start purchasing the Agile modules, okay? When you look at the modules of In Brilliance, it will actually tell you what that module offers you. Okay. So it, you know, it depends on what, what it is that you want. Okay. But you're, you're kind of doing it right. Um, when do you use the water soluble stabilizer? I use it when I am working with fluffy material. Okay. If you're working for material that is just cotton flat. Okay. I don't use it. There's no reason to use it. Okay. So, um, the knockdown stitching, it's in and broke. Yes. Um, April, you are the first person, Jeanette, that I heard explain this because I have asked the question, how do you know what font to use on different fabrics? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, actually, Pearl, honestly, it really comes down really to experience, right? You know, because... Trust me, I, I screwed up, okay? I have had fluffy uh, material, and then I go, oh, let me use this font. It's cute. And then I put it on there, and then after I'm done embroidering and they use it, then I'm like, I can't even read that. You know, it's like, um, what does that say? And it's because it's, it's you know, it the, the fiber went over the stitch, right? So, yeah, but... You know, it comes with experience, you know, as, as, as you start to embroider all the time and you start working with different types of fabric and different types of fonts and sizes and all that kind of stuff, 
the knowledge, your knowledge will start to grow. And then you start realizing what's the best thing to work with what, you know. Um, hey, so, so create. How you doing? Great idea of the hand towels. Oh, thank you. Oh, everybody seems to like the hand towels. Um, great suggestion to print out for the customer. I just had this situation and it helped my customer decide. Yeah, it really does. I mean, because the thing is, you know, when you're talking to a customer, right, and you say, well, this is how it's going to look. You know, what happens is sometimes you probably think they understand, but they may be picturing something different in their head, right? And then when they pick up their product, they're like, oh, I didn't think it was going to look like that. When you have that printout, that is exactly, exactly, no question how it's going to look on your fabric. Okay, that is how the design. I'm talking about the size, the actual size, and everything. It doesn't, it, there's no alleviation. It's not like it's going to get bigger or anything like that unless you change it. Okay, so that is one of the things that I truly love about printing it out and showing it to the customer because they get an actual visualization of what it's going to look like. And, and another thing also is I don't just print it out. Sometimes I do a test stitch, okay? And I will actually give them a swap. And the swap will have the actual design embroidered on there. That way the customer knows this is how it's going to stitch out. Because the thing is with the printout, it's just a piece of paper, right? And it's not the actual thread. When you do a swap, and, and let me show you what I mean by a swap, because I have plenty of swaps here. Hold on. Um, okay. When I meet with customers and they said, hey, you know, I want my logo, whatever, I'll come out and say, here, this is the swap, okay? So what I mean is this is the actual stitch out. So they see it and they can see it, they can touch it, they see how the threads look because it's an actual stitch out. When you have the piece of paper, you're really more focused on how big it's going to look. But when you give them something like this, okay, um, it, it kind of sh shows them the exact, the, the actual stitch out. Okay, so this is going to. You know, so those are two things that I usually do. Um, I do the um, the printout when it's just like a name, something simple, right? Or if I already have, like if, if somebody comes out and says, hey, you know, I want a towel and I already have like a sample towel, the design is not going to change. It's going to look the same. But let's say that they, they don't know, they want to change the font. They don't want this font. They want another font. They want a different size. In that situation, I'm not going to give them a swap. What I'm going to do is, because this is going to change, stay the same, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the name in the font that they want, and then I'm going to take that piece of paper and I'm going to put it right over there. And I'm going to say, this is how it'll look. Okay? So I hope that gives a little better explanation and give you guys a little bit of ideas of how to um, how to work with your customers and stuff like that when, when it comes to that. Um, what stabilizer did I use on the hand towel? I ended up using um, a tearaway stabilizer on this. And then the other thing you can do, because this is just a sample, so I'm not going to waste, you know. But what I would recommend you do, because this is going to be for children, and it's an option because this isn't like they're wearing it, okay. But what I usually do for towels is I put a tender touch or cloud cover on the on the back, so that way it um cut it um you know it, it hides all these stitches in the back, makes it a little nicer and, and give it a cleaner look. And um you know so and I use it with a heat press. I, I kind of put that on with a heat press, and it looks a little, it gives it a little more solid look. This is really a sample, so I'm not going to like go all away and, and put my tender touch behind it and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to waste tender touch on a on a sample. Now, on a customer's product, yeah, I would do that, but not on a sample. But for um, for these type of things, I usually, I use the tearaway. I mean, you could use cutaway if you want, 
Okay, cutaway will provide more stability, honestly. But um, this is going to be a pretty inexpensive towel. I'm, you know, I'm not selling these towels for fifty bucks. Okay, if I was selling them, if I was selling them as high end towels, okay, then I would say hell yeah, I'd be probably putting cutaway stabilizer in there, um, and then I would put the tender touch behind. But I'm just going to use the tear away. And the thing is, the design is dense enough that it should be fine with tear away. Okay. And, um, and the, um, the tender touch behind is going to be fine. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Angela. Um, Hey, Cynthia, how are you? Hey, Sacred. Hey, Christina. Do you need to update your in brilliance to get the new font? You would, uh, to get the font organizer, it's not updating it. You would buy the module. You would have to buy the module. Um, is there a way to print out all of the characters in one place to create a glossy of each font? One of the things that I that you can do, okay, is that in in brilliance you can just do capital and then you can create your own sheet. Um, ah, shoot, I already closed my laptop and stuff, but um, you know what? I will do a video, Debbie, on how to do that because that's gonna be uh, that's something that's pretty smart to have, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because if a customer is looking for a font. You can have a notebook with all the different fonts and how each of the capital letters look and stuff like that. And then you can look it up really easy. So I'll do a video on that so that you guys can see, you know, on how to, to do a, um, a font thing. Oh, boy. I got all these videos I got to do. Um, font. Font sheet video. How to do? Can't drop something. Okay, and this should be this should be a, a quick video to do and stuff because you guys know I don't like to edit all my videos and stuff. I'll see if I can hopefully do it this weekend and stuff. But I'll I'll show you I'll show you guys how to do it, Debbie. Um, let's see. A little later show. Hey Bubba, how you doing? Hey I'm Bias, how are you? Hey Nancy, how you doing? Oh my god, so just got back from a great day at the sewing and quilt X. So I guess she'll be showing us what she got. <laughs> oh my god, I know Nancy. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to call her after this. That's it. I'm probably not gonna let her sleep. <laughs> I gotta see what she got. Um, she probably got tomorrow. I go live 8 p.m. for a Nate Life session. Can't wait to see you. Oh, so if you guys don't know, this is my sister, Gifts HQ. So I guess tomorrow she'll be doing her live at 8 o'clock. And um, she's going to be, I guess, yep. This all show all the fun items. So I guess she went shopping at the Sewing and Quilt show. So we're going to have to hang out with her and stuff. I will make sure to put her link on the Facebook group tomorrow so that we can hang out with her tomorrow night because I, I gotta see what she bought and stuff uh the kids towels is super cute yeah i'm hoping that um this will catch on i think this i think it will i think people will probably like them especially if kids go to to camp they go away to camp they want to have their own towels and stuff like that and if you have a lot of kids and they share a bathroom and everything the kids have their own towels with their names on it i thought maybe that would be pretty cute you know good idea um let's see jackie says i get all my stabilizer from joann's they seem to have a sale off and the only thing is the no show mesh i get that from amazon that is another great place to get stuff too yeah joann's with the coupons now i'm gonna tell you something jack i have not been to joann's for a long long time and i'm gonna tell you there's a reason for it because every time i go over there i always end up buying fabric that I don't need and I have a whole bunch of fabric and I need to do something and I even have a lady that 
donated a box of fabrics to me and I'm like, oh, and I was thinking I could do little wallets and stuff like that to like, you know, cause so she donated me the fabric. I was going to sew and all that stuff to donate to other people. But yeah, it's like my time is just so limited now. And so I really, I'm, I can't wait for two and a half years so I can retire. Florinia. Oh, Fatima. I don't know if I'll ever get that. You know, I, I don't know if I'll ever get that right. Floor E. Christina, I think you're the one that told me. Floor E. Ani. Floor E. Ani. Floor E. Ani. Floor E. Ani. Y'all know what. I'm just going to. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make a sign and I'm going to say, this is the fact. This is the thread. <laughs> and I love that thread because that thread is really nice, nice and shiny. I really love that thread. Um. Oh, I'm personalizing Easter baskets for my grandson and granddaughter. The bag is made of heavy duty canvas and has a lining. I didn't use stabilizer. I didn't use stabilizer e either, Angela said. There's no need to use stabilizers for those baskets. But I used the 9014 needle. First one came out fine. I actually used the 7511 needle and it came out okay. I'm telling you, those Easter baskets are so easy. You don't need stabilizer. I mean, I know some people have been using tear away stabilizer and thing why you don't even need it you don't need it all i do is i just snap the the, the hoop on it put it on the machine i'm good to go and stuff and very easy to do um good money too on that um oh no margo i'm sorry oh i'll be praying for you he's gonna be fine stay positive stay positive um Oh, make some with your logo on it and try to sell them. I'll buy it, <laughs> Jenny. You know, yeah, I. You know what? I could probably try to modify the design a bit and and, and do something. I don't know. We'll we'll see. I'll I'll come up with something. I just gotta find the time. And that's and that's the other thing too is that that I find a little frustrating that I'm going through is that I am embroidering so much. For customers, which it's not a bad thing, okay? Because I mean, who the hell doesn't want that, right? But it's like I'm doing all the Etsy orders, I'm doing all my local orders, and then I don't really like have the time to do stuff for me, right? To like really enjoy sewing. So I think um, I'm like rethinking this, and I'm, I'm like Jeanette, okay, you should take a day for you where you go in the sewing room and all you, you you i don't even want to look at orders i'm not going to discuss orders i'm just going to pick a project for me and i'm going to stick to that project and just enjoy sewing you know because i'm doing so much embroidery and i have my quilting machine i have my sewing machine and i have my sergers and i'm not using them and i'm not using them because i'm not having time i don't have time for it like the um easter baskets and all that kind of stuff so yeah, I got a lot going on, so little time, and um, I'm just going to have to really, you know, I think this weekend I'm going to be sitting down with that appointment book and be like, okay, I got to I gotta rethink this. Because while this embroidery happy hour, I did get a text from a customer, and the shirts will be coming in by the end of the week. Um. And uh, yeah, so that means that um, I'm gonna be working on some shirts for these for this company. So when the shirts come in, another bulk order. So <laughs> which isn't a bad thing. It's okay, you know. I mean, it's an order, but it looks like um, I'm gonna be busy working on another bulk order. So I get a lot. I, I will tell you that I get a lot of the bulk orders now. It's the bulk orders are they're good and they're bad they're they're good because once you set up your embroidery machines for that order right the designs the threads and all that kind of stuff you're golden then it's like hoop the items and border them hoop the items and border them then it comes it becomes very repetitive right um really what takes a lot of time is when you have small orders because for every single individual order you have to set up the machine and setting up the machine takes time all right so depending on the design 
that that determines how many color threads you have to put in there and all that kind of stuff. So, but the thing that is bad about the bulk orders is they do take time, right? So it's like the less machines you have, the more time it takes. Now, I'm pretty fortunate. I have three multi-unit machines. So all the bulk orders that I get, I do get them done pretty quickly, um, you know, because I also have extra hoops. So as the machines are embroidering, I'm hooping items, right? And then what happens is when a machine's done, I just pull it out and then put another item in. I don't have to like unhoop it and then hoop the item and then put it in the machine. I already have items already pre-hooped. So it becomes a process where it's just, taking out the machine sticking it in taking out the machine sticking it in over and over and stuff and then just making sure that the machine's running and if there's any snags that i catch them quickly so that i can fix it and all that kind of stuff and then you know if bobbins run out change the bobbins and all that good stuff so it's a good and bad thing and what's the good thing about the bulk orders is they are very profitable because it's like it's a lot right so it's you know you have your price and then you times it by whatever and then sometimes if they have like more than 50, 50 items and stuff like that, I will throw in a little discount and stuff like that and let them know and say, because it's a over 50 item um, order, I will like take maybe $20 off or $30 off. You know what I'm saying? You know, just to make it worth their while and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So now, now, now I got another order. Okay. All right. So... <laughs> It's a, but it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing because this is what I want to do when I retire, and I'm glad that things are really starting to take off. And I gotta be honest with you, I really do enjoy doing local orders because, like I said, I build these business relationships with these folks, so it all really kind of works out. Um, you know, they come in and and I get to know them, and you know, when I deliver the product, I I really do love it when I get the repeat customers because. To me, that means like, wow, they really like my work, you know, and that really like makes me proud, you know. Um, but um, yeah, so let's see, let's go down because I only want to say hi. Yeah, you could donate to a school. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing. You could put a sanitizer pouch with your packaging as well as a free gift. That's a pretty good idea, and your cost. A few bucks to cover the material and add your your costs. Yeah, that's a you know what I kind of like that idea too. Um, uh, that you know about putting this in there. Um, and you know what, maybe this would be a cute addition to add to the kids' towel. You know, I mean, maybe I don't know. We'll see. Um, because I only have so much vinyl. I don't. I don't. And this is the other thing too. Sometimes I'm a little worried about putting free stuff in people's packaging because sometimes you put them in because you just have extras right and then when they go and they buy again they'll be like oh i didn't get my free gift and i'm like you know it's like all of a sudden sometimes it's a good thing and then sometimes it could be a bad thing because the next thing you know that little generosity that you gave them then all of a sudden it becomes an expectation all the time so it's like so that's why i'm a little worried about it you know um Let's see. Hey, Eunice, how you doing? Hey, Miss Max. Yes, I'm having. A, there you go. I knew it was you, Miss Max, with Ace One and throwing the patches. Heaven. She is having too much fun with that, and it's because of you that I bought it today. Because I'm like, wait a minute, she those are some really cute patches, you know. <laughs> so I bought them because I'm trying to figure it out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing with it this weekend and stuff. So it was you, Miss Max. Um. Hey, Debbie, how you doing? Oh, Debbie's going to be going to the expo this weekend. You created an addict. Oh, my goodness. Um, Let's see. Where did you get the design? Oh, Designs by Little B. That, that website, Designs by Little B. She has a ton of these. A ton. Different designs. Different designs. Got them both. The sewing machine and all that stuff. Yep. Designs by Little B. Cute designs. Um, 
All right, and they come in retirement's great hanging there. I need mean, two years and a half. I'm telling you, two years and a half. 2026 will be my year. I'll be smiling ear to ear. Ear to ear, I'll be retired and stuff. So, guys, I am going to call it the night. Um, and I'm going to reach out to this customer too because I haven't gotten money in. I'm not trying to make sure you get money because, um, yeah, so, and I have to reach out to this other customer that did text me to tell me that. He is going to be getting his shirts in by the end of next week, this coming week, which means that maybe next Saturday I got to start working on his bulk order. So um, I'm going to reach out to him because I do have to test out his um, design, which I already had. Fazl had already worked on it and gave it to me about like a week ago, and I didn't have a time to test stitch it. And I have it on my things to do, but I haven't done it. So anyway, but... Yeah, so I am going to call it the night. I am pretty exhausted, but um, yeah, I got to keep going. So, guys, have a great week. Enjoy sewing. Enjoy embroidering. And I hope um, you guys like the little, you know, tips and stuff that I gave you guys about fonts today and stuff. Um, sorry for the technical difficulties that I had earlier and stuff. I just really wasn't as prepared as normal. My laptop wasn't, you know charged up and all that kind of stuff but hey it happens right it happens you you guys hung in there with me and we're all good all right so i will talk to you guys later you guys have a good week have fun sewing and have fun embroidering so I'll talk to you later and have fun with those fonts so see you later talk to you bye